Vivian Vaughn with SEM Connections, and I'm going to share with you the new product introduction feature in SAP IBP. During this demo, I will walk you through how to forecast for a new product. So let's get started. As you can see here, we have three products to forecast, hat one, hat two, and hat three. For hats one and two, we already have Actuals History, which allowed us to easily forecast the products. For hat three, we have no history to reference. In order to forecast for the new product, hat three, we will need to go into the web interface of SAP IBP to set it up. Here in the web UI, I am in the Manage Product Lifecycle app. I have already selected my planning area, and I'm going to show you the product that we will be forecasting. When you add a new product assignment, you will identify which product is new. As you can see here, I have selected hat three. Now you can see the next level of product assignments that hold which products will be referenced for the forecast. I have chosen hat one and hat two because I'm expecting a similar forecast pattern. In this weight section, you can determine how much influence each reference product has on the new product. In this case, I expect the new hat to be more similar to hat one than hat two. So I weighted hat one more. You can experiment with the weight as much as needed to get the outcome you are most expecting. For example, if you only reference one product, you might weight it at 100% if you expect it to be exactly the same for the new product. Next, we have the valid from and the valid to dates. I have chosen a little over a year in the past to reference these products' historical data. And I have chosen about two months in the future before we start referencing these products. This is up to you how long you want to wait before the new product can reference its own data. At the bottom, you can simulate your reference products to see how the weights play out. Then we can move on to the forecast dates tab. This is where you can set up a phase in and or phase out curve. In this case, I decided to set up a phase in curve because I'm expecting to have a gradual increase in demand rather than right off the bat. I chose today as the forecast start and the phase in start date as today as well. Then I chose the phase in end date as about a month in the future. The curve I chose was linear. I did not choose a phase out curve in this case, but you may choose to do so if your product is only lasting for a bit of a, a, bit of a life cycle. Now that we have this set up, we can move on to the forecast model. In the Manage Forecast Model app, I selected my best fit forecast. In the model that you choose, you must just you must select the Consider Product Lifecycle Information in checkmark. This will allow your forecast model to reference other products for the new product forecast. Now we can go back into the Excel interface and check out our results. Let's run the forecast model. Even though the new hat did not have actuals data, this forecast model will still pretend it did based off the reference products and actually give an ex post forecast quantity as well as the, stat, the statistical forecast quantity. Okay, now let's refresh our data. As you can see, after the forecast model has run, we have a new forecast for our hat three. This is based off of hat one and hat two, like we determined in the web interface. Hat three even now has an ex post forecast quantity 
because it pretended like it has actual quantities based off of hat one and hat two. We can even see that hat three has a phase in curve, just like we determined in the web. If we did not have the phase in curve, like we do here, the forecast would have just started at this highest amount where it starts to become a consistent forecast. Now you know that SAP IBP can help you forecast for new products. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.